So I was sitting in my car and thought, hmm, let me take 10, 15 minutes and show my students or refresh my students' memory on how to factor. So enjoy the video. Okay, step one in factoring is you want to look at every term. Terms are separated by plus or minuses. You want to look at every term and make sure that there's not a common GCF that you can take out. GCF, greatest common factor. So you want to look at each term and see if there's a common number or a common variable that you can take out before you start factoring. Okay, notice on the paper I have three examples. The first example has three terms. So I'm looking for a common GCF among the numbers and the letters. Among the numbers, if you look at 30, 20, and 5, the GCF is going to be 5. Now when I look at the letters, they only have one A and one B in common. So I take out an A and I take out a B. Now inside of my parentheses, I'm going to write what I have left for my factors. If I took out a GCF of 5AB, inside the parentheses, I'm going to be left with a 6, I'm going to be left with an A, and I'm going to be left with a B squared. And you can check yourself by distributing, because if you distribute the 5AB inside the parentheses, you should get the original back. As you see for the second term, you're left with minus 4A squared B. And then the very last term, since you took out 5AB, you're left with just 1. And again, you can distribute to see if you get the original back. Because that's what taking out a GCF is. It's just undoing the distributive property. For the second example, it has two terms. The GCF is going to be 5, and I have 6 m's in common, so I put m to the 6. Inside the parentheses, I'm left with 4 m squared minus 3. And again, distribute to see if you get the original back. The GCF in this one is 5 m to the 6. Now your last example, if you take a look, you have four terms in the last example. One, two, three, four. The GCF among all four terms is just going to be two. They don't have any variables in common, so we just put a two on the outside. Inside the parentheses, you are left with a to the third. You're left with five a you're left with a to the third and then the last term you're just left with a 5 and this is how you take out a GCF after the GCF is taken out now you want to count how many terms you have in algebra you're probably going to look at four three and two terms if you have four terms you do this thing called factor by group okay we talked about step two that's counting your terms for right now we're going to start with four terms if you see the two examples on the page both of them have four terms and if you have four terms you want to do this thing called factor by grouping and i want to show you how to do this with the first example you look at the first two factors and you pull out a GCF. In this case, it's going to be 9. And in the parentheses, that leaves you with A minus B. Then you look at the last two terms and you do the same thing. Take out a GCF. In this case, it's just going to be a positive X. So I put plus X. And in the parentheses, I'm left with A minus B. Very important that both sets of parentheses have the exact same thing. A minus B, A minus B. Because that A minus B, I'm going to write it out to the front. I'm going to take it out as if it's a GCF. And then I'm going to write what I'm left with. So I put A minus B to the front. And in the next set of parentheses, I'm left with 9 plus X. And this completes your factory. So let's do it again for the second example. I look at the first two terms. And it looks like that I have a GCF of 2a squared. So I write 2a squared as my GCF. And what I have left in the parentheses is a plus 1. Now my last two factors, 
they only have a one in common but I'm gonna take out a negative one and the reason why I'm taking out a negative one is because I want a plus B or I'm sorry a plus one to be inside of my parentheses you see how the parentheses look the same a plus one a plus one that's what I want to happen so I bring that factor out to the front a plus one and what I have left is 2a squared minus 1. Okay, let's say you count your terms and you have three, three terms. Now, if you have three terms, there's two different techniques that you want to think about. If your first term has a coefficient of 1, meaning there's no number in front of your variable, there is a easy technique to factor that type of polynomial. Okay, step four, if you have three terms, if you notice the two examples on the paper have a coefficient of one for the first term. So there's a simple technique to approaching these. We want to start out by making two sets of parentheses and putting a P for the first term in each one of the parentheses. Now we got to play a guessing game to figure out what the second term in each one of our parentheses is going to be. I need to find a number are two numbers sorry that when you multiply you get 12 but then you add you get 7 two numbers to multiply to get 12 add to get 7 that's going to be 4 and 3 now this little X technique that I use on the side that's just what's going on in my brain like you you don't have to write that part it just helps me organize my thoughts so I put plus 4 and plus 3 inside the parentheses and that is complete. Let's try this again. For the next example, I make two sets of parentheses and I put an X in each one of my parentheses. I need to find a number that when I multiply I get 45, but when I add them together I get negative 14. Those two numbers are going to be negative 9 and negative 5. If I multiply those two numbers, I get positive 45. If I add them, I get negative 14. So negative 9, negative 5 are the numbers that I put. In. If you have three terms and there is a number in front of the first term other than 1, then you have to do something a little bit different. Now, these two examples, if you notice the first term has a number other than 1. The technique is going to be a little bit different for these. I am going to call this the AC method. It's not always called this, but I like to call it the AC method because it involves multiplying A times C. So again, it just depends on the teacher. But if I multiply A and C in the first example, 2 times negative 12 is going to give me negative 24. So in my mind, I'm thinking, what do you multiply to get negative 24? But when you add, you get the coefficient that's in the middle, which is negative 5. Multiply to get negative 24, add to get negative 5. That's going to be negative 8 and positive 3. The two numbers that I find, negative 8 and positive 3, I'm going to use those two numbers to split up my middle term. So instead of having negative 5x, I'm going to rewrite this and put negative 8x plus 3x. I'm just changing the middle term. And notice how many terms I have here. 1, 2, 3, 4. I have four terms, and that takes us back to factoring by group. So factor by grouping, I look at the first two terms, pull out a common factor, which is going to be 2x and I'm left with x minus 4 and then I look at the next two terms and pull out a common factor which is going to be 3 left with x minus 4 again that common factor I bring to the front and I'm left with 2x plus 3 and that is complete so let's run through this one more time I multiply a times c which is 15 I need to multiply to get 15 but add to get negative 8. Those two numbers are going to be negative 5, negative 3. I use those two numbers to split up the middle part. 
and I'm going to rewrite my three term polynomial. I want to rewrite it so now I have four terms. Once I have four terms, I do factor by grouping. Take out a 5x and I'm left with x minus 1. I take out negative 3 and I take out a negative 3 because again, you want the terms to match the first set of parentheses which was x minus 1. So I take out a negative 3 and I'm left with x minus 1. That common factor, I bring it to the front and I'm left with 5x minus 3. If you have two terms, then you can do one of three techniques. So the first term, or the first technique, is called the difference of two squares. Okay, if you have two terms, this technique is um, pretty simple. You just have to take the square root of each term. Make sure there's a subtraction sign in the middle when you're doing this because the, the rule is called difference of two squares. So for this first example, I take the square root of the first term, which is x, the square root of 81, which is 9, and I write it once with a plus sign, and I write it once with a minus sign. I take those two square roots, write it once with a plus sign, once with a minus sign. Next one, the square root is 2y and 5, and I take 2y and 5, and I write it once with a plus sign, once with a minus sign. If it's two terms and you can't take the square root, but you can take the cube root, then you could do either the difference of cubes or the sum of cubes, depending on what type of sign is in between those two terms. Okay, what we have here is our difference of cubes and sum of cubes. Difference of cubes has the following formula. And sum of cubes has this formula. So let's start with difference of cubes. I have two terms, and I can take the cube root of each term. The cube root of the first term is x. The cube root of the next term is 3. So x is representing your a term. 3 is representing your b term when you're following the formula. From here, it is a plug and chug type of problem. So I have a minus b, which is going to be x minus 3, and then I have a squared, which is x squared. Then I have a times b, which is 3x, and then I have b squared, which is going to be 9. So let's do this again. If I take the cube root for the first term, it's going to be 2x. If I take the cube root of the next term, it's going to be 5. So 2x represents your a term, and 5 represents your b term. Now let's follow our formula. 2x minus 5, 4x squared, plus 10x, plus 25. The sum of cubes is the exact same way. Here's the formula for sum of cubes, and now let's find our a and b. The cube root of the first term is going to be 3y. The cube root of the last term is going to be 2. So I do a plus b, which in this case is going to be 3y plus 2. And then I have a squared, which is going to be 9y squared, minus a times b, which is going to give me 6y, plus b squared. Okay, guys, how are you feeling? 10 minutes. 10 minutes of factoring. I showed you how to do it in my car. So hopefully this can help you. Feel free to run this over and over again. You really want to know how to factor before you go into college algebra. So make sure you take some time and just watch this video over and over again until you finally get it. Okay? Bye. Am I done?